Hello everybody, this is Joshua Hayes at BigWaveTrading.com for your December 19th stock market wrap up for you to use Monday or next week, all week long because it is a holiday shortened week next week so I would assume that we will probably continue to stay in this tight trading range that we've entered in recently. Let's go and start with the S&P 500. As you can see, this index has really gone nowhere for a long period of time. If we start at October 10th, to December 19th, you can see that the S&P 500 has moved a whopping negative 1.26%. So basically in the past two and a half months, it's going nowhere. And as you can see recently in December, since right here, what day is that? Since about the 8th, from the 8th to the 19th, the market's completely flatlining. Now, as you'll see here, volume was huge today. With a little price action, some might say churning. That looks like churning because we're not going anywhere. However, today was quadruple witching, which means that futures, options, options, stock futures, stock options all expired today. And that's why the big spike in volume. So don't look too much into the volume spike. And as you can see with the price action just being flat, you can see that we're about ready to head into a holiday shortened week. The Dow Jones Industrial Average shows the same thing. As you can see, it was slightly down. It could not hold the 50-day moving average yesterday, and it continued to not be able to get back above it today. That can be slightly bearish. The huge volume today, though, we can't really necessarily call it massive distribution because it was due to quadruple witching. However, if we do count distribution days, that is uh, two in a row. And if we go here, it's one, two, three distribution days since the follow through day the market gave as a signal on for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Where's my little thing? Oh, pressing wrong button. Haha. -ha. Okay. So on 12 5, it looks like was a follow through day. And since then, we've had three distribution days. That is not what you like to see in a rally and I have to admit throws a little bit of caution into the, the people that think that we're going straight up. Also if you notice on the Dow Jones Industrial Average relative strength line weakening as the, as the index moves sideways. So the Dow Jones big caps aren't as strong as they were. Uh, the US dollar as you can see it doesn't show up here but let's go ahead and bring up the UUP as you'll see it's the same thing basically up 1.5 percent today as you can see the dollar found support right at the 200 day moving average and that's where we stand now we'll have to wait till TC updates it once again TC showing its flaw what a great charting software you really think that the Warden brothers would I don't know put a better product out there I guess volatility index dropped five percent today despite the NASDAQ rallying only 0.7% and the New York Stock Exchange actually falling despite the <laughs> NYSC falling the volatility index actually fell today so once again another day where the market goes down and the VIX goes down also so quite odd to see the market sell off and to see the VIX fall. Normally when the market sells off, the VIX rises as sell-offs are supposed to generate fear. However, in this topsy-turvy, crazy world that we live in, falling market seems to generate complacency right now. So that just shows me that <laughs> I, I have a tough time believing that we've bought them, but you know what? There are some bullish looking charts out there. I have gone from 38 shorts, 4 longs to 34 shorts and 8 longs. And out of all of the stocks that I was short for big wins, I've only had to fully cover one and the very next day it became a short again. So I'm not quite in the camp that we've seen the bottom yet even though I do have some nice charts. The fact that I have some nice charts and zero beautiful charts is probably the hint that we have not seen the lows. The NASDAQ 100, you can see it was up a little bit higher volume. It's quadruple riching. It's really not going anywhere. Same with the NASDAQ, as you'll see here. And as we can show on the NASDAQ, let's just start it from here. Let's go back maybe to further back. No. Let's see where it comes up about there we go so from 1024 to 1219 almost a full two months 
the NASDAQ has moved a whopping 0.80%, 0.79%, 0.80%. So the market is going nowhere in the sub-intermediate time frame, and that's why going long and going short has been a mixed bag. Luckily, we've been blessed. The most recent longs that we've gone long was up 11%, up 9% today. And then we had one up yesterday that was a brand new long that was up immediately 7%. So 7%, 10%, 11% in a few days, that's a good showing. And that shows that going long in the short term is right. However, all of my shorts still saying, keep on holding us, Josh. We're going lower. It tells me that the market probably isn't done. S&P 600 was the strongest today, up 1.6%. Russell 2000 was the same way with it. Let's look at Platinum. If you went long platinum over the 50-day moving average, you're hanging on by a thread as it's resting right on the 50. It's still in a basically flat consolidation trading range ever since the big fall this year. And as you can see with silver, silver is still holding on to the 50-day moving average. Had a bullish tail today in its session, so it has a high chance to possibly go higher. Gold, as you can see, it failed the 200-day moving average for now, but it's still holding the 50-day moving average. I know the moving average are still trending down. However, in the short term, we're having higher lows for right now, higher lows. So the trend could be changing for gold. And some of that's confirmed by some gold stocks, as you can see, and then some silver stocks. There's some that are making some movements here that kind of hint that maybe gold is ready to make a move or else you wouldn't have stocks looking this nice recently anyway that's where I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up let's see how much time we have yeah we're going to wrap it up there there's not much else to show you as the trading range is starting to get much tighter because we're entering the Christmas week and I'm not sure which day Christmas is but let's see if I can figure this out really quick 2021 22 23 24 25 Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday so Thursday's Christmas so I guess Thursday's Christmas maybe Friday's a half day I don't know what I, I don't know I'll have to check to make sure but I know one thing trading should be very dull we shouldn't get much price action however with our new longs going up 7, 9, and 11 percent, I think it's safe to say that we should stay long our recent longs that we have. I know there is one recent long that we've taken that is moving down immediately instead of moving up. However, it's holding support. So all of you watching this that know which long I'm talking about, you might want to sell half, but keep holding on because it has given you final sell. For the other longs that are, were up nicely yesterday and today, that's how they're supposed to always act in a bull market, and that's how three out of four longs will act whenever we are in a bull market. Not only that, out of three of the four longs that we take, two of those four longs at the beginning of a bull market should be up 20% for us within the first two weeks. We're still not seeing that, which makes me think that we still haven't seen the bottom. When we see this in Max Green Bop charts everywhere, I'll know to get 200, 400% margined out long, and I'll let you know when that is. Until then, cash is still king. Be safe out there. Continue to hold those long-term shorts that we've had until they give us a clear get out of dodge signal and for the recent longs we got to keep them small but we can't be afraid to go long when we do get the signals this is joshua hayes at bigwavetrading.com i'll be back with a part two and part three for my subscribers aloha